Chris. Today I'm working on a watercolor in my little watercolor journal and I thought I would do this nectarine. My neighbor has a tree that's full of nectarines. This one the stem just fell off. It's nice and ripe. And I put some of the dehydrator. They came out really good. So I'll find a page. I don't want to paint this many leaves. So I'm going to decide which ones are going to fall off. I'm just going to take all of that side and then I need to decide how I want it to look. The nectarines grow off the bottom of the branch, like this. I may have to prop this up, so I'm going to work on that a bit. So I've got a pin, and I'm going to pin the leaves back where they belong. So. I'm just going to put a pin through the middle. And I want to show a little bit of the, the curve and the coloration. Looks like there's a bit of a bruise here. So I want to pick the best side and I think I'll just do like that. Then I need something to prop it up. So now I have it propped up with a white background so it won't distract me. And one more thing I want to do is I want to tape this down so that when I have my book on top of it I don't move it. Okay, now we can start. an HB pencil in my mechanical Koenor and I'm going to sharpen it.
and I will draw my nectarine. And I'll try to uh, change the exposure on this so that you can see it better. Sorry, I had that out of frame for a while. I was concentrating so hard. When working with transparent watercolor, I like my drawing to be fairly faint so it doesn't show through too much. So I've already wetted my palette. So these are all Windsor & Newton Professional Colors. I'll put my chart up so you can see um, the names of them. Uh, this is Peacock by Holbein and this is Opera by Daniel Smith. This is a very turquoise and this is a very pink. And today we're going to use a little special effect. We're going to use some table salt. That over here. And out a brush. This is a number five Robert Simmons. Round. My first wash is going to be very wet. And I'm going to put the salt on. And what that does is the salt soaks up the pigment and the water and leaves little um, sparkly spots. So I'll give it a feel. Make sure it's dry. And then I can take the salt off. So next I'll do some glazing and glazing is wet paint on top of dry paint and darken up these areas. I'll continue to build my colors through glazing and drying each layer as I go and getting in the darks.
I'm going to work on the leaves for a while. Let the nectarine get nice and dry. I'm working on mixed media paper so it doesn't react the same as a, a fine watercolor paper and it just it gives it more texture, it gives the paint more texture. Just happens to be what I made this book out of. So when you're working on plants and flowers, whatever color of the flower or the fruit, you'll find some of that color in the foliage. So you can see on the top of the branch there's quite a bit of red in there. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'll take this as a um, Princeton Art Company 2 round. to continue these leaves off camera because it takes a while and then I'll come back and show you how I do uh, highlights and shadows. I found this little leaf and I thought it would be nice to balance out the picture to put it over here. So while that dries, I'm going to uh, pick out some highlights here and there. And I do this with just a little bit of water. Now to do the shadows, I don't use any blacks. I don't use black or white with transparent watercolors. It 
black will deaden it and white will fade it out. So I mix my dark shadow colors. And I usually use French ultramarine blue and a lizard crimson. And because we have multiple lights coming down onto the subject, the shadows are kind of blurred out. So I'm just going to take the darkest shadow and use that as my guide. When I go off camera like this, I'm using this absorbent pad to take most of the water out of my brush. And that's just um, an absorbent uh, bed pad like a uh, for a child's bed or a piddle pad for a puppy or something. In fact, a, a piddle pad is probably the um, best way to go if you wanted to try it. You can buy a package of, I think, three or something or two or three at the dollar stores. Try them out. Cut them into pieces. to title it. Just call it Nectarine. And then I'm going to put down here, this was from my neighbor's tree, so I'm going to put from Robin's tree. I'll use my uh, drafting pin by Rotring Isograph. I learned to use these when I was working for an architectural illustrator, and I really like them. I like to put a little cartouche on there with the date and where I was. Then I'll dry this and erase my lines and we'll be done. And now I can have a little snack of my dehydrated nectarines. I'll put down below how I dehydrated these. They came out really well. They're crispy, but a little bit chewy and they're really good. So thanks for watching and have a great day painting. Bye bye!